Uh, I don't think that the issue right now uh, has to do with sitting in a room. Uh, the issue right now uh, that's relevant is the acknowledgement that if we're going to uh, raise revenues that are sufficient to balance with the very tough cuts that we've already made and the further uh, reforms and entitlements that I'm prepared to make, that uh, we're going to have to see the rates on the top 2% go up. The president at least digging in on those top rates as they continue to face off in a stalemate with Speaker Boehner. And joining me now is Mark Halperin, MSNBC senior political analyst and editor-at-large of Time magazine. Hey, Mark. Great to see you. Good afternoon, Andrew. Let's talk about what has not been discussed enough, which are some of the, some of the other uh, consequences if they do nothing, which is the sequestration and huge defense cuts, which many people, including Leon Panetta, say would be terribly damaging to our national security. It's right now, it's the big thing that people aren't talking about as far as I'm concerned. Right. Not just Secretary Panetta, but the Pentagon, uh, the, the, the Joint Chiefs, a lot of Republican uh, defense hawks, a lot of the defense contractors say not only would the level of cuts in the automatic sequester portion that goes to defense be harmful to national security, but that it'd be a huge hit on the economy because there's so many jobs involved. So. My sense is people don't want to talk about that because it would raise a lot of alarms, but in some ways is more serious than the tax cuts. Even though they don't all occur at once, it would set us down a difficult path. It's already created a lot of uncertainty in the defense world. It would create even more. Uh, and it could be that some of the more liberal opponents of the deal on the Democratic left would not mind seeing these defense cuts. Just as they wouldn't mind, in some cases on the left, seeing the tax increase on everybody so that they could then force a vote to lower the rates back only for those Americans outside the top 2%. You're right, a lot of liberals would like to see that. This is why the president has leverage. He has some leverage off of his big victory in the campaign, but he's got a lot of leverage off of the tax rate issue as well as these defense cuts, and the Republicans know it. And that's why there's much more pressure on them. And you hear this from a lot of lobbyists and a lot of members of Congress, quietly even a lot of Republican governors. Eventually, even if we go over the cliff, it may be the Republicans have less leverage at that point rather than more. Now let's talk about one of the other uh, juicy stories today, which is Bob Woodward in the style section of the Washington Post reporting for the first time that a, a prominent uh, Republican national security expert who was traveling with David Petraeus was dispatched. She was a Fox contributor and uh, was dispatched by Roger Ailes during the primary season to approach General Petraeus. There's tape of this because uh, she was apparently recording him in this conversation and, and over in Afghanistan asked him if he would consider running for president and saying that, that uh, Ailes would support or Rupert Murdoch would support. Not sure who would exactly support. Well, apparently, according to this tape, Petraeus clearly said no and said he wasn't interested in all of these conversations. Uh, Woodward reached out, of course, to Roger Ailes, and he said that it was kind of a joke, a wise-ass way I have, to quote him in the Woodward piece. Uh, what do you make of all of this? <laughs> well, there are a lot. It's one of those great <laughs> Woodward lot. stories where in, there are as many questions begged as there are answered, like who recorded it, who thought it was in their interest to release the recording, and what is KT McFarlane, who's a respected national security figure from Republican administrations and a longtime Fox analyst, what is her side of the story? Um, if you listen to the audio, if you read the quotes, um, it doesn't sound like it's a total joke going on there. Now, maybe there's <laughs> confusion between Roger Ailes and, and KT McFarlane, but there are a lot of unanswered questions about it. And a lot of people looking at Petraeus as well as Fox and Quinn asking about the various roles they had through the prism of this conversation. But at least according to these quotes, there's nothing that the general said as he's quoted that is at all out of context with what he has always said publicly is that he is not planning to have a political career, at least right now. On, that, right now. on, on that point, it's consistent. But some of the other things he said are raising uh, some beltway eyebrows. Uh, <laughs> and speaking of eyebrows, Anna Winter, one of the biggest bundlers and contributors, being mentioned. Of course, there are always people mentioned for these ambassadorial posts, but there is a mention that she might be up for either the Court of St. James or Paris, two of the most prominent posts that are frequently given to big contributors and supporters of the president in this next term. And that has been the, the case in Republican and Democratic White Houses. Can you imagine Anna Winter as ambassador? It would you certainly bring a lot of... Uh, pizzazz and style to you, either of those embassies. You could knock me over with a meringue if she's picked. <laughs> Look, that's a kind of person who's gotten that one of those two slots. Those two slots typically go to very big contributors and people of some 
prominence uh, and with a, a social relationship with the president as much as a professional one. So I wouldn't be surprised if she got it. And she was extraordinarily involved, as you know, in not just a kind of generic fundraising for the president, but some of the high visibility fundraising for him in a city here in New York where some of the money the president had counted on and got in 2008 from Wall Street, for instance, was not as available to him as it was four years ago. So having Anna Wintour and, and her community give money was a big deal. And again, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if she got one of those slots. And in fact, uh, she is this longtime editor, an extraordinary person, the great supporter of the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the costume collection, and a, a big uh, philanthropist as well. And uh, she's a, a serious big interview person, and she's got great eyebrows. Well, <laughs> that's for you to say. Uh, we have a big interview tomorrow, so uh, we look forward to that with the author of Sasha and Emma, a very important new book which has rave reviews in the New York Times, so we're excited about that. I look that forward as to well. watching that, Andrea. I hope you do. <laughs> and thanks very much, Mark. Thanks.